All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Precious Williams, who is in Brooklyn, New York. How are you doing, Precious? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And, uh, and what we're going to talk about today is about taking your pitching, taking your sales pitch from trash to cash, because Precious is the queen of pitching, pitching for profit. Uh, and, and so well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And your book is P Pitching for Profit, The Bad Bitches Playbook to Convert Conversations into Currency. Yep. And who doesn't want to do Always that? Always be ready. Always be ready. Absolutely. There you see the book uh, and a link to that book will be available um, underneath this video. Um, so Precious, let's let's dive straight into it. What are some of the what are some of the mistakes that people make? Or, well, let me maybe even back up a second. When you talk about pitching, what do you mean by pitching? Because sometimes I think people people mischaracterize what that is. Right. So what I believe that most people believe pitching is, is if you are going on Shark Tank or if you are pitching to an investor, not realizing that pitching is something that you do every day. A pitch is a brief, short way of introducing you, your talent, your skill sets, and your abilities to a target market, hoping that you can get to the next step, right? So if you think about it like this, as I said, you pitch every day. You're talking about that no good man, no good woman in your life, the job you love, the job you hate, opportunities that are coming your way. If you add strategy, cutting, and precision, now you're selling, right? And so think of a pitch like this. Someone in your family cooks really well, maybe your boyfriend, girlfriend, your wife, your husband, maybe grandma. You're going over to the house and it's the holidays. So you know it's going to be smelling good and tasting right. You get over there, you start putting food on the plate and you all sit down and you all say grace. That plate is your business, your brand, your book, your product, your service, your career, everything. That first fork you take, that's the pitch. So mm. out of all of that, the pitch is a, a juicy morsel, an enticement of more to come. You want yeah. to titillate their senses so that they're willing to either schedule a meeting with you, go to your website, buy something, check out something, right? And mm -hmm. so when you think about it like that, most people, when they understand that pitching is something you do every day, whether you're pitching to your supervisor, whether you are the supervisor, whether you're you know, pitching to the CEO or you're in corporate America or you're in a nonprofit and you're trying to get donors to donate more, you're trying to attract a new donor base, or if you're at a networking event, your job is not to tell them all that you do. Your job is to titillate and to excite them to want to learn more, to ask you questions and get to the next step. So that is what a pitch really is in a nutshell. Yeah. And and the, the interesting thing is that, uh, as you said, I mean, you know, you may have the greatest meal cooked. You may do everything but maybe you keep it locked away in the kitchen and uh, you serve something from the store as an appetizer beforehand. So they never get to it. And I think this is what people oftentimes do. They have great information to share. They have great talent to share, but the initial, uh, the initial impression is not a good one because they haven't fine tuned, as you say, you know, that, that, that initial kind of like titillating piece. Well, it's, it's true. And remember, I'm the killer pitch master. I'm a 13th yeah. time national elevator pitch champion, successfully appeared on Shark Tank along with seven of my clients. Uh, my clients are getting corporate training contracts with the biggest companies in the world, not, not the nation, the world. And they're also winning pitch competitions. Um, they're meeting with investors and getting investor dollars into their company. And they're finally learning how to crack the code on getting their target market to want to do business with them, right? So when you think about pitching, it is also about visibility. It's about creating your own lane, right? And so that's why people don't contact me for motivational speaking. They don't contact me for uh, inspirational speaking or on transformational speaking. They contact me for killer pitching. So that's mm -hmm. elevator, media, investor, speaker, sales and interviews, right? And as a world-class master communicator, most people don't understand how to put a pitch together. You can watch all the Shark Tank. And I wrote a, an article a long time ago when I was on Shark Tank. And I said, what Shark Tank doesn't teach you about pitching? 
The way you pitch to an investor or the way you pitch on television is not how you pitch at networking events. It's not how you pitch at an interview. And so once you start to understand the different elements of pitching or the different types of pitching, now you're ready to kick into overdrive. But again, most people don't even know who their target market is. They're just like, oh, I want high net worth individuals. Okay, so does everybody. Why would they even be why would they even be interested in you? What track record do you have? What credentials can you bring to the table? Who in your network can vouch for you? What you got? And just yeah. say, oh, well, I know this appeal to them. Does your does your look appeal to them? Do you have the requisite things that they're going to be looking for? If not, maybe your target might, maybe you want to aim for a different target market because maybe there's a lower hanging fruit that gets it instantly. You work with them and then you can build your way up because now you have credibility. Yeah. And I think, uh, Precious, you, you raised a great point there just to begin with about knowing your audience, because uh, this is a mistake that, as you said, that people often make and they think and they often think that, OK, if I have an elevator pitch, that's all I need. And then I can use that. So basically, I have a hammer and everything is a nail after that. Right. Right? I use my instead of instead of, as you say, is looking at the different audiences, the different purpose of, of your pitch. What, what are you looking for? Sometimes, you know, sometimes obviously, as you know better than I do, your pitch has a different purpose with one audience and it does with another. You're, exactly. you're looking for a different outcome from one from another. Exactly. And you can have like a, a skeleton at best, right? Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to know and study your audience. So if I'm pitching on Shark Tank, I'm telling you there's certain things they don't even care about, right? Before you even meet the sharks, you're going to deal with the producers. If you are pitching to media, that stuff you say in a networking event is not going to cut it because you haven't established that your unique perspective. You not you haven't shown how you've gone against the grain and succeeded, or this is something worth writing about. If all you're doing is being, um, for lack of a better term, a me too, like everybody is saying the same thing, I promise you, you're not going to get it anywhere. Why do you think I wrote my book, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches for Women Entrepreneurs and Speakers Only? I could have wrote the art of the killer pitch. Boring. Mm -hmm. yeah, but because I'm I started off focusing on women who I knew were ready to break out of a box and they just needed someone who had the moxie, the guts, the testimonials, the credentials who did it and lived to tell the tale and still survive and thrive, even in a pandemic and economic downturn and social unrest. They were looking for me. So when other people, and I know you've, I know you, you probably been through this too. There will always be people who've never done what you've done, who will try to tell you how to do it. I'm like, if you're not in the trenches with me, and if you're a spectator, I'm not paying attention. Spectators yeah, yeah. always have a better way. It's like when you watch men who watch sports, oh, he should have did this. I'm like, because you're on the field, right? Because you actually understand what's going on on the field. You actually heard what the coach is saying. Please, please. It's cute though. It's real cute though. It's it is. Cute. It is cute. They, they have a saying back home in Ireland, um, there's, a, there's an Irish sport, uh, a Gaelic, Irish Gaelic sport called hurling, which is played with a stick and a ball. And they call the hurler on the ditch, which means the guy standing, who's standing on the ditch of the field, watching them, but telling everybody what to do, but not actually playing. Right. Yeah. So and I think that's exactly what you're talking about. So I said, you know, and if you want to really take your sales pitch or any kind of pitch from 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 trash, which is most pitches are trash. Mm -hmm. Most pitches are based on a formula people really find on Google and think that it's going to work. One of the things that I always see people struggling with is they can always give you how great they are, their great solution. What's the problem? Right. What's the problem? Yes, you can be the greatest florist. If I ain't looking for flowers, what difference does it make? <laughs> you can come at me all day long. I don't care. Yeah. Maybe until somebody <laughs> dies, maybe until I meet the right person. So one of the things that, and I had to learn this, right? So as a killer pitch master, I'm a 13-time national champion. And after a while, if I'm going to keep it a buck with all of y'all, sometimes wells run dry because not everybody wants to be in a pitch competition. So what, was, what, what else was missing in the marketplace that wasn't being tapped into? I've been a speaker since I was 16 years old in St. Louis, Missouri. There are so many people who want to speak. They may have a message inside of them. And sometimes I tell them, this is more for the church. This is more to hear yourself. And this is cathartic for you. What is it adding to the audience? Honestly, what is it adding? Just because you created it doesn't mean that people want to buy it, right? <laughs> and so I started asking my audience. Like, you know, what is it about pitching or speaking? And they were like, hey, I want to have the confidence to speak. I can't pitch if I don't have the confidence to even get out there. Right. I don't have I don't know how to I, 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 I don't know how to speak well publicly. Well, of course, they're not interested in my pitching because they can't get past that. 
So then I started to create products like uh, hashtag booked and busy, the masterclass for speakers. Um, I started uh, creating, um, you know, elementary, intermediate and advanced pitching, speaking and uh, content creation techniques, right? And by doing that and having success with my clients, the ones who had been winning pitch competitions, it started to lead me into doing, becoming a corporate trainer. Because if I'm having all the success with my individual clients, yeah. then other people started to notice like, there's something unique about the way she speaks. She doesn't sound boring or whatever. And you see how it led. So I will tell you, oh, the places pitching can take you. But if you do not address what the challenge is and all you want to do is offer how great you are, you're losing, you're losing people. They yeah. would need to know that, that you're talking to them. So a lot of people always hear, oh, you're trying to get clients. Oh, here's six, six days to six, six figures. Oh, that's real cute. <laughs> I want to know the person that actually did that. I just really want to yeah. know, right? Yeah. And you want to so, know how many, how many of those figures are actually uh, before the decimal point? Right. So <laughs> you can say that. What track record do you have? So I started, I created a rock star confidence. I call I, you know, I, 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 I started, I created something called the killer pitch an introduction, the killer pitch, rock star confidence, and then stuff so for speakers. And then I created digital products. Now you see the different markets in there. And then there is the tier for the corporations, the nonprofits and the top foundations, right? But mm -hmm. see, it took a process. So there are people who will listen to you or I, they will listen, talk about sales and, oh, well, you know, I took, uh, two hours with a guru and now I'm at that level. That's cute. That's yeah. real cute. And a lot of people will do that. But I'm telling you, if you've already had success, you know it's a process and you don't start off at the top. So what do you, what fundamentals do you need to know? So if you don't address what the challenge or problem is, offer your solution, right? In, in a sea, in a crowded marketplace, your solution has to truly make sense. If people would rather go to Tony Robbins or Les Brown, that's not a play, playground for me. Mm -hmm. But in pitching, this is my playground. Yeah. Now you want to play. Yeah. So then, what is your secret sauce? What, what credentials do you come to the marketplace with? And I'm not saying school. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, you know, I am a 13-time champion. I have been on Shark Tank. I've written three number one best-selling books on pitching, reviewed by Forbes magazine. And can we keep it a buck? I am black on both sides. I'm not light skin, no, no six pack abs, no Brazilian butt lift. I'm a 42 year old woman who is a bad bitch with a power pitch. You either love it or hate it. The underdog's <laughs> on top. So then some people are going to ask you what kind of type of testimonials. So people will look at LinkedIn. I promise you, there are more people who go to my LinkedIn than will ever go to my website. They make right. a decision on LinkedIn. So my LinkedIn has over 170 testimonials in the last year and a half. How hard did I have to work to make that happen? And I wrote none of them. But what it tells people is not only can she work with individuals, companies, corporations, nonprofits, but she can also create courses where you can learn on your own because yeah. she has a track record. Finally, what is your call to action? We talk about it all the time. And I always hear people forget this. What do you want them to do after hearing you? What's your big ask to get them to do that? So I love speaking at uh, business focused events. I love being a keynote speaker. I love being a corporate trainer to the LinkedIn's, the Googles and the Microsoft's, the Intuit QuickBooks, the Federal Reserve Bank, still black on both sides, y'all, still black on both sides. No Ivy League degree, but I am a former attorney who actually taught at Harvard this year. So oh, well, well. when they told me I didn't have it, but they contacted me. Think about that. <laughs> Yeah. So what do you want them to do? Do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to book a discovery call? Do you want them to pay for a consultation? Do you want them to check out this cool new video, um, this video thing that you've done? Uh, have you created a great floral arrangement that you want them to look at and imagine? Um, there's a lot of people who struggle, service-based entrepreneurs struggle with, how do they not sound like everybody else? Well, again, that comes back to what's your unique flavor? What's your secret mm -hmm. sauce? What is it about you? Not your company. What is it about you? So then tell them what you want them to do. Then you can address your name and the name of your company. Because before that, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what your name is and the name of your company. Yeah. I, 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 this, I was, I, I was just going to say one thing, one thing, Precious, because you just touched on something there about uh, sounding like everybody else. Uh, I think part of the problem sometimes is people try to mimic other people. Right. Um, in, instead of like bringing your own personality, because I mean, if you're not, if I'm not precious, right, I'm not going to try and do what you do because you, you'd be you're always good. I yeah, you're always surprised doing, but... who wants to pretend to be me. I'm like, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. So you have to figure, so you have to be realistic about what your actual personality is and, and, and make that work for you as opposed to try and pretend to be somebody else. Cause it won't work otherwise. Right. 
It won't. And another way that you can do that is unlike a lot of people who leap with their name and the name of their company, which nobody cares about until it matters. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you ask a question, a startling statistic or a quote? Why don't you do that? For example, like I remember when I went into Shark Tank, uh, you know, and I'm looking at the sharks and they're looking at me. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's about, to do, it's about to go down. Ladies, ladies, it's Valentine's Day and you finally met the man of your dreams. You know what time it is. It's time to find some sexy, sexy, sexy lingerie that's that <laughs> move off nicely. But you weigh over 200 pounds. What's a big girl in the city supposed to do? Well, if you're anything like me, then you went to Victoria's Secret and you found out that they didn't even need a bra in your size. So then you went to Ashley Stewart and Lane Bryant and you didn't really like the selection. Finally, as a last resort, you went to Macy's where your choices are black, beige, and white. Again, what's a big girl supposed to do? Well, that's why I credit Curve for Girls Lingerie. And Curve for Girls Lingerie with the ultimate shopping experience for full big divas and plus size fashionistas. Now, I know what you're thinking. But let me be clear, there are over 40 million women, size 14 or larger, in the United States, just like me, and we all want pretty underwear, that red, hot, sexy, and fresh stuff. And I know sharks, where them dollars at? Where them dollars at? <laughs> well, in the first six months, we crossed six figures with our innovative website at www.curvygirlslingerie.com. Then we created our own direct home party sales model. Yes, we did that. And we had stylists from all over the country selling paying us to showcase our wares to their network. And then we had the audacity to be big girls going on a tour to showcase our wares to places that had never even heard of us. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we show why we celebrate the beauty of curvy women every day. They call me the female MacGyver of business and the sugar <laughs> girl wonder. Now, when I started, they called me too fat, too black and no Ivy League degree. Well, even if all of that were true, I'm still standing before you all. I'm not begging. I'm about to take you on a ride of your life. So sharks, you know what time it is. You've been served. My name is Precious Williams and I'm the proud founder and CEO of Curvy Girls Lingerie. Thank you. Okay. And then I said, okay, ladies, now let's get in formation. The, my queen, my full figure divas came out and Mark Cuban was like, you go girl. I said, yeah, the element of surprise. Um, <laughs> and I hope what you all take from that pitch is, did you hear facts, figures and statistics? Yes, yeah. but it wasn't based around that because you often hear that people will buy the jockey before the horse. I can tell you all the facts, figures, statistics, but it doesn't tell you that most people don't even think about plus size women. So what did I have to do? When I changed my language, I changed the game. So full figure divas and plus size fashionistas, they're like, whoa, bars. I'm like, yeah, Drake, Drake. I got them bars. I got them bars. And it totally shocked how people saw me. They were like, whoa. I said, yeah, because if I say plus size women, no one cares. You hear 40 mm -hmm. million women, you're like, mm, and I'm like, it's more of us than there is of anyone else. And if no one pays attention, there's that, there's the there's another thing. If you want to do a short pitch, here's something. And when I say a question, a startling statistic or a quote, ladies, raise your hands if you want to be a bad bitch with the power pitch. Clutch the pearls. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I see you, <laughs> fellas. I, oh, you raising your hand too, fellas. You want to be a bad man with a master pitching plan? Well, you come to the right place. My name is Precious Williams, and I'm the proud founder and CEO of Perfect Pitches by Precious. And I literally teach the art and the science, the most killer elevator pitches, media pitches, investor pitches, speaker pitches, sales pitches, and interview pitches. They call me the killer pitch master because I will help you what? Slay all competition. <laughs> so if you really want to get the kind of customers you really want, if you really want to stand out in a crowded marketplace, if you need to know what to say to network so people actually take your cards and reach out to you. If you want to get media to be calling you, then go to my website, www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com and go to the work with me page and set an appointment. And if you just want to you know, try a free resource, go to pitchingforprofit.com, which is my free six question quiz that will give you a customized report that will teach you how to start pitching. Again, my name is Precious Williams. I am the proud founder and CEO of Perfect Pitches by Precious and the killer pitch master. Uh, I love it. And, and but uh, and one of the parts that I mean, it comes it, what comes through everything you say, even when you're not doing your pitches, everything you say is a belief and confidence in what you're pitching. And I always find that that's another thing is like I, I could I could be all upbeat and wave my hands around and all of that. But if if you didn't really feel that I had real confidence and, and faith and really believed passionately in what I'm pitching, you, you'd see through that in two seconds, right? 
Right. But then that's why I say it's a killer pitch match. My job isn't to make you a clone of me. Yeah. I have quiet storm clients. They will never be. Ah. So you know what we talk about? How to be like Tupac. Oh, so I want you to be the quiet storm. And see, there is a, there's a strategy to all of this, right? So if you have a big personality, that's great. But it, it's not cute to be a big personality with nothing to say. <laughs> nothing to say. you just like, oh, she's funny. But if I didn't come with the, if I didn't come with no results, you, you're looking at me like, mm-hmm. if you're the quiet storm, I always say, take a moment and sit in yourself and have them looking at you. You can start off with a pitch. I can do that at the drop of a dime. You bring them to you. Drop some books. I mean, you want all the attention on you and then begin. And you can do it with a quiet voice. And all of us have met someone who doesn't talk a lot. So when they talk, they're like, this word? Oh, you know mm-hmm. they're dropping some of that hot tea. <laughs> So yeah, start I'm- off with a bang and end with fireworks. Dr. Cheryl Woods taught taught me that. And so I really want it. If you want to take your pitch pitches from trash to cash, you really have to put the practice in. You really have to, you know, become a, a real student of pitching because I don't care how many Shark Tank episodes you watch or all these pitching shows until you write them out yourself or work with a pitch master. It doesn't make sense. It just looks like, oh, it should look easy because I've been doing this a long time. For you, it shouldn't be easy. It should be a challenge. Yeah, no, I I, I totally agree, and I and I think that's uh, that's why obviously we suffer through a lot of bad pitches and stuff is because people think it's people think it's just a bit you have to do at the beginning, and uh, how hard can that be? And yeah, as you said, I know my stuff, so it should be pretty easy for me to to explain it to you. But but just like anything else in life, and unfortunately, we live in this world of what I call the shortcut culture world, where everything is supposed to be easy, and you're supposed to be able to do everything in two seconds flat and never have to work at it. What you're outlining there is to get down to what you are doing, that that concise pitch with the energy and everything, that takes a lot of iteration and, and getting it right and practicing and understanding what you're doing. It really, really does. But like anything else, I don't know anyone who just started a career without doing any background on it. And if you didn't, it will come up later. I promise. The only reason I know this is because when I started Curvy Girls, and yes, I had success initially with pitching, but you still need to have a team. You still need to talk things out. And there came a point where if the foundation is not solid, you're going to run into problems. I promise you. There are going to be decisions you don't know how to make, which is which happens to any entrepreneur. But fast out the gate, you're going to stumble because there were building blocks you didn't have. So if you don't have a solid foundation, if you don't understand the nature of pitching, if you don't understand who your target market is, not who you want it to be, not who you think it is, but you need to do the research involved. Now, you can believe what you see on television. I'm not a 15 year old TikToker. I'm 42. <laughs> I'm 42. I'm not competing with 15 year olds and I don't have to. So once you create your own lane, it's not just by having a tag name, but really what do you want to be known for? Right. Are you a dream slayer or a power player? What do you, what are you known for? Sometimes what I find that people do is use very cliche terms. Like when people say, Oh, do you suffer from imposter syndrome? I'm like, Nope, Nope, I don't. (laughs) If I have fear, I have fear, but I don't feel like an imposter because I don't know anybody who can walk in my shoes and have done what I've done. So I'm not an imposter, but I will acknowledge that fear comes because it's supposed to. I haven't done everything in this world. And so you can believe the imposter syndrome or you can just understand that there's levels to everything, even in business and pitching. Yeah, I, I love it. It, it. This has been fantastic, Precious. We're bumping up against the end of our time. But I this, know. I'm this, sorry. You know, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying it. Oh, I, I'm enjoying it immensely. I mean, I, I I love interviews like this because, to be honest, I just sit back and learn. And I and I think and you you've uh, you've dropped some fantastic wisdom on us here. Um, all of Precious's information is going to be below the video and links. And I would. I would really, really, really encourage you to go check it out because, uh, and this is, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to flick you back up on screen. Hold up that books. book again. Yeah. Well, tell us about the rest of your books quickly. Okay. So the first book, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches for Women Entrepreneurs and Speakers Only, that gives you the psychology behind pitching and seven major branding bitches. So if you're unstoppable, powerful, flawed, all those sort of things, you're going to learn about the psychology of pitching. And the second book, which is the workbook, is I give you prompt. Once you know who you are, you will have prompts so you can create the perfect pitch for you. Not everybody else, but for you. My third book, Pitching for Profit, The Bad Bitches Playbook to Convert Conversations into Currency, teaches you how to build and rebuild your network. Because once you have a great pitch, now it's time to monetize your network and have your network pitching you in places you never even knew. 
But if you don't, if you don't have the pitch, you're not going to get here to pitching for profit. So you yeah. pitch first to get out there for visibility, for sales and stuff like that. But when you pitch for profit, other people are pitching you and you just show up, you know what your race are, you just keep it moving. Perfect. I love it. Uh, and we'll have links to all of those books. Listen, thanks again, Precious. This has been fantastic. And as I said, I totally encourage you to go and check it out because I'm a big believer in going to the best, find the expert, learn from the expert, and, and, and it'll save you a lot of grief in the long run because this stuff, this stuff is not easy. And, uh, is. and that's why... That's why we need we need people like Precious to help us help us get on the right track here. So listen, thanks again. Uh, thank you for listening and watching, and thank you, Precious. And I will it's see you all again honor. soon. Thank you. Yeah.